talked a bit about Morgan Frost, but scratch last night uh, for the first time this season. Yeah. He was scratched uh, 10 of the first 20 games last year, 11 times overall. He has not been good. One goal, five assists through 15 games. And it is following a pretty familiar pattern. Uh, 2023-24, Frost scored three goals, two assists in his first 16 games. Yep. And it took him till December 7th <laughs> to play his 16th game. Yep. And then over the next 46, he put up 35 points. Um, then final nine games when the whole team fell apart, he was part of that. Right. 41 points in 71 games, 0.58 points a game. Yeah, that looks like a, oh, okay, he's good. The season before that, six points in the first 27 then scored 40 points in the final 54. So you finish it up, 46 points in 81 games. Eh, all right, over half a point a game. Good for him. I realize we talk all the time about guys being streaky. But you can't do this and expect to be counted on Damn. as an everyday player. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. The thing that's especially frustrating for me with Frost this year is that Last year, not only did he have the good second half and establish himself, I thought I thought he turned a corner. But it wasn't just because he scored. It was because his underlying numbers of 5-on-5 got real good all year. Even when he wasn't really scoring much in the beginning, he was driving play. The defense got better. And Tortorella praised him for that on multiple occasions. He said, look, he's done all the things I want him to do defensively. He's really improved that area. I need him to score. Then he finally started scoring, and Tortorella gave him the minutes. This year... Morgan Frost has been getting obliterated at five on five. It's not even that he's not scoring. It's that the Flyers aren't controlling play with him on the ice. With him on the ice, 15 games in, because he obviously didn't play last night, 37.34 expected goals for percentage. Like, And we're talking about a guy who last year was one of their better play driving forwards. I don't know what happened to him. And you can get away with that to a degree if you're an offense guy who's scoring. But he's not scoring. No. And he's not providing any two-way value. And I thought last year, maybe I'm like, you know what? <laughs> that version of Morgan Frost can be on my team any day. A guy who scores 40 to 50 points, drives play. He can be a middle six center for me any day. The Morgan Frost we've seen so far this year cannot be a middle six center for me any day. And yeah, maybe the, the scoring comes around. And that's great because it always seems to with Frost. But if the two-way play doesn't come around too, then you wonder if last year was just a fluke. If that was just like a, a statistical blip where, oh, for one year, all the bounces went his way and he looked like a play driver, but in reality, he's a liability. I, uh, I the same, you mentioned that, what do, I, I need him to score a quote from John Tortorella last year. And he just said the same thing about Tony Dick. Like, yeah, man, he's got to put the puck in. And like, that's why he's here for, for, to produce points. Yeah. Is being like a 45 point, just under a point, six point a game guy enough? It is. Like how much does he need to score? So it, it is enough if he's providing some two way value, which he was last year and he hasn't been this year. However, I don't think it's enough. Is if, it enough for John Tortorella? Well, probably not. <laughs> is it enough for Danny Briere is the better question, That's though, fair. because so far it has been. He has not moved yet, moved on from Morgan Frost. He's continued to be in his corner. It probably is enough if the two-way play comes back. It's probably enough for him to be a 40 to 50 point guy, especially because there's never been a world where we like seriously thought he was going to be a 1C. No. We're always hoping that at some point the Flyers will either draft or trade for a 1C that will push Morgan Frost down into a middle six role. You know, now potentially it could be a middle six role with Jet Luchenko. Maybe Jet Luchenko continues to develop and becomes that 1C. I'm not hold my breath, but I guess it's possible. He showed a lot in camp and whatever. Point being is that, yeah, 40 to 50 point play driving center is perfectly fine for me to be a 2A or 2B center. But if every year you're doing it by being terrible the first two and a half months of the year, no, that's not enough. I don't want a player that inconsistent being in my middle six because a guy who's scoring 40 to 50 points a year is already kind of inherently sort of replaceable. Like, you can get those guys in free. You maybe can't get a 1C easily in free agency. You can get a Derek Broussard type in free agency. You can deliver that. And if Frost is always going to come with the first two months, three months of the year being 
a liability to the point where the coach is scratching him, then no, I don't think so. And it's frustrating because now, like, the first month and a half of this season, it's over. Now we have three years of evidence that Morgan Frost is a slow starter. So unless he absolutely blows the doors off the rest of the year, that's going to be a black mark on his record. And, like, I feel bad for him because I like Morgan Frost as a player and a person. But the fact of the matter is is that <laughs> it's kind of on you. Like, you're the guy who struggled at the, the start, maybe even, like, the first third of three consecutive seasons. In the end, like, you kind of have to look in a mirror. And now Arizona has moved. So those four point games are going to dry up a little Ooh. bit. And that, that that's a little bit of a <laughs> that's low blow. Unfair. It's a little I, bit of that a low was blow. unfair. I know. Um, he scored against good teams. He though. did. He did. He did. At least uh, last year. What do you, however, make of this John Tortorella quote? Uh, I got this from Jordan Hall's Twitter. Yeah, not, I, I was there, so I can give you context. Yeah, on it. I'm not coaching him like I did the past two years. I don't think he deserves that. He hasn't played well enough. So I, and that's a yeah. there's some there's an ellipsis in there. Yeah. So that's not so, one continuous. So, sentence. so I was actually the one who asked both of these questions. Okay. So I will give the context because basically what I said to Tortorella in this presser was I was like John, you know, last couple of years when he struggled, you know, you've you've scratched him sooner than this. This year it seemed like you were giving him a longer leash, and he stopped me. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm not coaching him like I did the last two years." I don't think he deserves that. The implication being that, like, he earned a longer leash from me. That's why I didn't race to scratch him this year the way I did the previous two. And then I was like, so if that's the case, if you didn't think he deserved that, why scratch him now? And then his response was, he just hasn't played well enough. Okay. So that was very much from Tortorella's perspective. Like, look, I did give him a longer leash. I really, really tried. And finally, I just reached the end of it. So this is a cause and effect statement. Yes. Got it. Yes. Um, the admission that he was kind of kicking his ass the previous two years. Interesting. It is interesting. It is interesting, yeah. Um, it, John Tortorella is interesting, like, just on the oh, he's whole. He's a fascinating I mean, man. We talk about he him. Is yeah, he is absolutely very fascinating. Yeah. What do you make of that admission that, like, I was kicking his ass and then he lived up to it? Like, it's almost a compliment. It is. A, it's it's a comp. It's not even a back end compliment. Yeah, no. I think it's actually a compliment. He doesn't deserve that. It, like, yeah. He earned me not kicking his ass anymore. Yeah. Yep. And now it's just, have you seen him? I have to sit him yeah. now. And I think he's right. Like, yeah. There's there's no part of me that is being critical of John Tortorella for no. scratching Morgan Frost in yesterday's game. Morgan Frost deserved to be scratched for a game because, quite frankly, he is not playing well. Like this is not a this is not a Mishkov scratch where you're like, well, he's clearly one of the best twelve forwards on the team, but they're trying to do something with long term development. And whether you agree with the scratch depends on whether you trust John Tortorella. In this case, Morgan Frost is not playing like one of the twelve best forwards on this team. Period. Like maybe he's better than Nick Delorier, but Delorier goes in for other reasons. That's just the reality of the situation. Everybody else. I think you can make a case that Morgan Frost has performed worse than basically every other forward on this team. Has he been worse than Tyson Forrester? That's a fair question. He's one who you can make a case. <laughs> Two fair. goals, it's one fair. assist on the season for Tyson Forrester. Um, guy we had really high hopes for. I coming picked him into as my, uh, yeah. the most improved. Yeah. Uh, I and thought he was going to have a big to year. To look at the way the coach, because... The deployment tells you the story. Forster played over 19 minutes in two of the first three games. We're a calendar month into the season later now. Uh, he just played a season low 12-32. The, uh, the only forward with less was Tony Dick. And at even strength, Forster played 10-37. Richard yeah. played 10. Yeah. Like, they basically, he is getting the same minutes as an AHL call-up. Um, what's he, what has happened? to me the biggest frustration point i have with tyson forrester at the moment because i'm going to compare him to where he was last year this time this time last year he wasn't scoring either he was struggling offensively he stayed in the lineup he didn't get sent down because every other part of his game was good he was dominant along the boards the flyers were controlling play you know getting a ton of scoring chances controlling the shot battle when he was on the ice he was doing all of the little things and it was frustrating that he wasn't scoring. Fans yeah. were getting frustrated with him. He was kind of becoming a running joke in certain sections of Flyers Twitter. 
But you looked at the underlying numbers and you're like, yeah, that's why he's still in the lineup. He's doing all those things. The Flyers are a better team, even if he's not scoring. They are a better team when he's on the ice because he's got such a heavy stick, because he's breaking up plays, because he's winning battles along the boards. This year, he's not scoring. He's also not doing those things. He's been a liability at five on five. They're getting outshot and outchanced and outscored with him on the ice. That is the bigger concern because, look, he's a young player. He's still trying to figure out all of the offensive side of his game. Maybe the second half of last year was a little bit of a mirage, and maybe he'll get there again at some point, but he hasn't quite figured it out. Yeah. I'm willing to be patient with Tyson Forrester's sure. offense. He's still young. <clears throat> I'm frustrated with his two-way play because I've seen him be so much better. And to me, that should be the foundation of your game that doesn't go away even when you're not scoring. And the reason why I believe that is because we saw it not go away the last time he wasn't scoring. Uh, like, that's the stuff of, like, man, that's what, like, the Sean Couturier comparison in my head is, like, yeah, man, if the offense ever comes, great. But if it doesn't, we still have a useful guy. Yeah, and that's what and I was maybe thinking about Forster. Yeah. And I see that with Forster, and then suddenly, ah, oh, but this is this is the thing that shouldn't go away because it has exactly. nothing to do with bounces. Exactly. It has nothing to do with any of that. Yeah. It's just how you're playing, and it hasn't been good enough. We all silly like the mayor. 